Tourism, an industry that largely relies on traveling, was hard hit by the COVID-19 pandemic mitigatory measures instituted by the authorities as central government stepped up efforts to fight the disease. These measures were anchored on avoiding crowds and banning unnecessary traveling, developments which were also taken by various leaders around the world. Victoria Falls, the prime resort city of Zimbabwe, was heavily affected by these measures and from a peak of almost 80 to 100 percent capacity, tourism activities dropped to almost zero percent with every other tourism activity closing shop. The tourism industry became the ultimate loser and several livelihoods were affected. When we closed in March 2020, no person at all came through for visitations and uh, those that orders could not pay us anything because uh, their um, cash flows were seriously affected. The livelihoods of our employees were seriously affected because uh, we no longer had any money to pay salaries. Neither were we able to open up to any tourists coming through into the country. The borders were closed. No persons could actually fly into Zimbabwe for activities. And uh, uh, the people who were meant to pay us money, those that had already enjoyed our activities, could also not pay us anything at the time. And um, we stayed like that for the whole year, as you all know. Last year, we only operated for just four months. We operated from January to March and we only reopened briefly over Christmas, so it has been tough. It has been tough, but uh, we're here and we're grateful and we're seeing some shoots, so it could be we may have turned the corner. Major players in the tourism industry were arguing that since the hospitality sector was anchored on traveling, recovery would depend on a successful vaccination program and the reduction of new COVID-19 infections. Meanwhile, when Zimbabwe was grappling with these sad effects of the pandemic, China had rolled out a successful vaccination program which had seen everything in China getting back to normal after a successful vaccination program exactly the same initiative needed for a young and fragile economy like Zimbabwe to get back on its feet. Allow me to, to thank the People's Republic of China through the Ambassador His Excellency Gao for having stood with us in this time of need. They were with us during our armed struggle. You personally trained in the People's Republic of China as our first, first uh, the first cadres of this country to train there. And we were with them right up to 1980 when we got our independence. We have walked this journey together through thick and thin and this time when the pandemic struck the entire globe China was again on our door to help us on the 15th of February Zimbabwe received the first batch of 200,000 donated Sinopharm vaccines from the People's Republic of China, and that was to mark a successful vaccination program by the Zimbabwe government. The government of Zimbabwe has so far received over 1 million Sinovac COVID-19 vaccines from the Sino-Zimbabwe COVID-19 vaccination program, with the President Mnangagwa-led government also acquiring over 5 million doses for the implementation of the vaccination program. Resultantly, this has seen the vaccination program gaining momentum countrywide, with the city of Victoria Falls becoming the first to attain herd immunity, developments which have subsequently led to the opening up of tourism activities to vaccinated international tourists. All thanks to the Zimbabwe Sino Cooperation Program, which dates back to the days of Zimbabwe's own liberation program. 
the vaccines that are manu uh, manufactured in China are the ones that we've been using in our vaccination uh, program. As you can remember, we launched a mass vaccination for the population of Victoria Falls and we managed to cover the majority of our population in Victoria Falls, covering over 60% of the population, uh, technically giving us head immunity in Victoria Falls town. So these vaccines have been instrumental in our vaccination program and making sure that our population has access to vaccination in the city. In Victoria Falls, we have uh, access to two uh, border posts, uh, which is the uh, Big Falls border post and Kazungula border post, those being our land borders. We also have Victoria Falls Airport. As you may remember that the Big Falls Airport was upgraded to an international airport and with that came facilities for Port Health, uh, temporary quarantine and isolation facility within the, the terminal itself. Um, we had to put in place facilities for Port Health, uh, screening, uh, testing at the borders to manage uh, the, the tra uh, tourists that are in transit and travelers that are in transit. We also received extra uh, workforce uh, manpower for the border posts to also assist in the management of the pandemic. I am going to take a look at the first one. I am going to take a look at the first one. I am going Yes, I was vaccinated. We suffered a lot uh, due to lack of business, no money at all because there was no money completely. Uh, people were afraid of moving around, people were afraid of the pandemic. And it was very difficult for one and every business person in, 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 in the town. However, with this vaccination uh, process, I believe uh, it helped in so many ways. And I also wish or believe again that it's going to help again in trying to bring big business together. I think Victoria Falls is one of the best world in Africa, where everyone is going to be vaccinated in this place. We love Victoria Falls. And now, the effectiveness of these Chinese vaccines is manifesting itself in Victoria Falls, where new cases have remained relatively low as compared to other areas in the country. No vaccinated person has died so far in the resort town following the city's massive vaccination program. These positive developments have seen a mop-up exercise to have all city dwellers not yet vaccinated coming forward to get the magical jab. What we have uh, managed to achieve in the fall in terms of case management is that we have uh, been able to uh, create uh, intensive care facilities. We have also been able to create high care facilities. But uh, one of our big achievements is that our primary health care facilities being clinics and even rural uh, health centers in the peri-urban areas have been equipped to provide uh, antigen testing for COVID and they have uh, access to through telecommunications with doctors in terms of the patients that are in home isolation and that are uh, being managed uh, in the hospital. So for minor symptoms we are managing the majority of the people in home isolation uh, to decongest and to prevent overwhelming of the healthcare system. 
uh, it's now I feel safe to the buy one butanga so I do not explain it to the in the one so chitas and dinoit and snash at the chaguti uh maybe local sagani muna I know touch one or what if afraid so I see no kunzo up in the vaccinator. I decided to come because I number one now. So I cover better after the vaccinator. So I took to come. I'm happy because it was a good tea. I did the right thing. But yes, it challenges and my chances of it are just up. So I'm happy with you that protected the next person. Now, after nearly 18 months in the doldrums, tourism in Victoria Falls is enjoying a rebound, with visitors returning in droves to see the majestic falls, explore the mighty Zambezi, and navigate the unspoiled safari. I've always wanted to come here to see this beautiful country, and it's hard to put into words the beauty of this country. The people are amazing. Everybody's so friendly. They laugh. Uh, they go out of their way. I, I don't expect much, you know, just to be courteous and that everybody wants to please people. <laughs> influence my decision to come here is uh, my safety. I felt it was a, this one of the safest destinations in Zimbabwe because I would have wanted to go to a place like Kariba because I've never been there before and then I thought I didn't, I didn't know how safe it was but because I know about Vic Falls and uh, a, a huge percentage of people here having been vaccinated. I thought this would have been the safest destination for me. Well, we were supposed to have made this trip last summer a year ago, um, and because of COVID, just all over the world, um, we didn't come. We just wanted to stay safe. Um, but uh, this year, um, looked like there was a vaccine again all over the world. Uh, was, was, you know, doing better, being distributed, so we thought it'd be safe to come, as long as we took precautions. Yeah, well, I feel, you know, everything I've seen in Victoria Falls, the time I've been here, has been very, very safe. Um, they're very serious about masks, um, all the sanitation, the social distancing, seems like all the right precautions are being taken, so I feel, I feel safe. We were supposed to be here in 19. We had planned this trip for two years, and at one point, I was tired of trying to reschedule and my wife got mad. She was like, I will not be denied. So we finally got here and it's, it's, worth, it's worth the fight that she went through. And I'm glad that she, I'm not going to say she forced me to go through it, but she kept pushing me and I'm glad. Uh, and the tourists themselves are happy to be back again, partaking in their favorite pastimes. We really appreciate the way Zimbabwe is treating the COVID. Yeah. All over the country, they take it very serious. We felt very safe. Yeah. But we also knew that you were well vaccinated. And so that, we felt safe with that. And then safari, you don't get close to people anyway. Okay, tell us how was the jump, Anna? Excellent. Excellent. Great. Can you do it again? Yes. That All was, day. Oh, really? Yes. It was your first time, right? Yes, it was my first time. First time. And amazing. Oh. What can you tell people? From... Come to do it. It's amazing. A very uh, good uh, experience. Experience. Oh, it's been a very nice, just enjoyable experience in a 
Victoria Falls overall and, and, um, and in Southern Africa. Um, very friendly people here. Um, just uh, beautiful scenery. The falls are gorgeous. Um, the hotels are very nice. We've been very nice. It's awesome. I mean, it's not just the falls. It's the animals that you see with the falls. You see more than just water going over the falls. You see animals and the wildlife, the, the whole pictures from the, from the air. Uh, For tourism players and the general downstream industry benefiting from the industry, business is indeed beginning to show positive signs of recovery. There's quite a, a, a positive mood out there. The inquiries that we're getting are quite massive and uh, we can only um, attribute those inquiries to the attending of the herd immunity. We have also started seeing a few people coming through to do activities mainly when you look at uh, the cruise site, the sunset cruise site, and also the helicopter flight sites, as well as uh, the tour of the force. We, we are seeing trick, uh, numbers of people trickling in. Yes, they are nowhere near where we were before the pandemic, but there is actually a positive trajectory, which is showing signs that indeed the industry will recover. So, so, so the, the response we are getting can be directly attributable to the reaching of the herd immunity because we started getting these when we, there was a pronouncement that uh, we have read uh, herd immunity. Quite recently, our government made a decision, which is quite a valid and correct decision in the circumstances, to open the Zimbabwe, the, the Zimbabwe Zambia border and the Zimbabwe Botswana border. This is actually going to ensure that there is a regional flow of tourists between Zimbabwe and uh, its two neighboring uh, friendly countries. We are in the Kaza region, as you know, where Zimbabwe, Botswana, Zambia, and other countries have had flows of tourists doing safari activities across uh, the borders, traversing the borders without any impediments. Now, if the countries are locked down and there is no, uh, the, the borders are not opened, it becomes quite difficult for so many tourists who don't want to come into Africa or come into Southern Africa and fly only into one country and end there. They want to come into one country and then traverse into the other countries. So the opening of the borders is actually a, a very good decision that was made. Uh, we, we, we are hoping that um, um, in the next uh, month, we'll be seeing quite a lot of people coming through. We are not only relying on, going to rely on the international tourists, we're also going to rely on the regional tourists. I must say, we reopened in March, and when we started, obviously we're not flying on a daily basis, but um, from April going on, we, I must say, we've been flying on a daily basis. So we would average about four to five flights a day, which is quite remarkable. Ever since we reached herd immunity, We've really been sneezing about it. We've really been making a lot of noise about this to the international community. And I must say, um, we're getting good feedback. We're traveling quite a number of Americans at the moment. And uh, we seem to be getting the, the Mexican niche as well. And the rest of Europe is responding quite well. So it's good times. Yeah, I don't know if any much is and I'm wishing everyone in Zimbabwe to be vaccinated because this disease is it's bad. Yeah, it's bad. So, so far, even tested at Proof Port National Governor, everyone is vaccinated. And we are clear. That's why we accept, that's why teachers accept our visitors at the end. Because we are vaccinated. We are
It's good vaccination. Yes. These developments are a direct indictment on the effectiveness of the China vaccines, which have allowed the city of Victoria Falls realize herd immunization and subsequently opening up business in the resort town. Indeed, the Zimbabwe China Vaccination Corporation has helped build the health shield for the people not only in Victoria Falls but countrywide. This shows that vaccines do not only save lives but also reopen economic livelihood lines for the citizens. China and Zimbabwe are good friends and good brothers. We have always put Zimbabwe and their people on our priority. Despite the huge domestic demand, and limited supply. China supported Zimbabwe by donating two batches of COVID-19 vaccines. In the meantime, we have been facilitating the procurement of more than 11 million doses at the lowest price from China. With great pleasure, I would like to announce that another batch of vaccine donation by China will arrive here very soon. I can assure that China's vaccine support will continue until Zimbabwe overcomes the pandemic. I'm delighted to see that by rolling out the national vaccination program with Chinese vaccines, Zimbabwe is lowering its COVID infection rate and death rate. Some cities and towns, such as the city of Victoria Falls, has generally achieved herd immunities, bringing the life back to normal a boosted confidence in Zimbabwe's tourism industry. I'm looking forward to visiting the Victorian Falls with my schedule permits. We appreciate Zimbabwe's support with China was going through the most difficult time fighting against the unknown virus. And since then we have been in close cooperation to protect our peoples against the pandemic. Besides providing vaccine support, China donated nearly 2 million facial masks, 137 ventilators, and many other medical and sanitation equipment from governments and organizations of different levels in China and Chinese enterprises here in Zimbabwe. China also provided consultation and shared experience in pandemic prevention and control. Last May, China sent an expert team to Zimbabwe. They visited both urban and rural areas across the country, held consultations with Zimbabwe National Public Task Force and medical personnel, and left a report of recommendations on COVID prevention and control. China's medical team based here is also looking around the clock to Dr's medical aid. China-Zimbabwe and the pandemic cooperation set a model for China-Africa and the pandemic cooperation. During our fight against the virus, China and Africa, including Zimbabwe, held the same position that origin tracing must be based on science and politicization must be firmly rejected, while the United States some very few countries intend to politicize the scientific study. China is not afraid and support origin tracing. We have done what we should do. Now it's time for the United States to trace the origin of its cases earlier than the breakout in Wuhan. As we can see, the new Victoria Falls International Airport which was commissioned in November 2016, have greatly helped promote Zimbabwe's tourism industry. As for other major cooperation projects, China and Zimbabwe have been in close cooperation in the areas of infrastructure, agriculture, manufacturing, medical service, and digital economy. The aid of another 524 homes will be completed by the end of September, built with China's grants, the National Pharmaceutical Warehouse, a new parliament building, will be completed in the first half of the next year, supported by China's fund, funding thermal power station expansion, 
probably look at the international airport extension and the net one phase three project are doing the schedule. There are great potential in our cooperation. In response to the pandemic, we will focus more on cooperation in healthcare, economic, recovery, and livelihood protection. In the meantime, we will continue to encourage more Chinese enterprises to invest in Zimbabwe and explore more cooperation opportunities and possibilities. The People's Republic of China's unparalleled readiness to avail access to the vaccines for commercial procurement testifies to our shared and mutual desire to continue enhancing cooperation, particularly in these times of distress and competition for resources. The fact that we are the only country in Africa which has to get received the second batch of the vaccine doses from China attests to the strong, comprehensive and the strategic nature of our partnership with China.